Hey everyone, uh, this is a budget guitar. This is an Epiphone Les Paul Special Vintage Edition. This is the guitar that I'm giving away in a couple of weeks. Um, I've been playing a number of budget guitars over the past couple of weeks. This guy, a couple of Squires, uh, a Donner, and I have one thing to say about budget guitars in 2019. They're not making them like they used to. They're making them a hell of a lot better. Uh, back in the late 70s when I was learning as a teenager on budget equipment from like Sears, uh, they were just junk, you know, they had plywood bodies, they had awful sounding pickups, they had necks with big bows in them, they were hard to play, they didn't stay in tune. And, uh, you know, nowadays you can get a pretty decent guitar for a couple of hundred dollars made with real wood, you know, this is a poplar body, mahogany neck, a rosewood fretboard, right out of the box, it played great, the nice straight neck on it. Great fret work, you know, there's not one overhang all the way up the fretboard. And, uh, you know, decent pickups. You know, pickups pickups aren't rocket science, right? Pickups are copper wire wrapped around a magnet. And uh, it's only one variable when it comes to tone. You know, these, these are a variable when it comes to tone. But, you know, subtle differences in tone come from your electronics, the nut, the wood that's in the body of your guitar. Those are pretty subtle. You need a keen ear to pick them out. Others are the fingers, the pickups, the amp that you're using, the, the, the effects that you're using. You know, I don't know how many uh, videos there are on, on YouTube of guys comparing $30 pickups to $300 pickups, and half the people can't tell the difference. And then another 25% prefer the sound of the $25, $30 pickups. You know, it, it's, for the most part, uh, the difference between expensive pickups and cheap pickups are, are fairly subtle, you know. These have very decent pickups and these are Epiphone 700T in the bridge, uh, 650R in the neck. They're very decent pickups, uh, you know, for the money that you're paying for this guitar. Uh, you know, you're not going to get nice bell chimey tones out of this thing for playing blues and whatnot, but, you know, that's not the pickup's fault. You're playing the wrong guitar. You know, you want single coil Stratocaster for playing, you know, music like that. But uh, very decent pickups. I have no problem with the pickups uh, in this guitar for what this guitar is, is for, you know, this is a double humbucker guitar, uh, basically designed for playing rock or hard rock or metal music, and they sound just fine for that. Where they do scrimp uh, when it comes to budget guitars, you're not gonna get a nice nitrocellulose finish on a budget guitar. You're not gonna get binding all around the body of the guitar, but those are aesthetic things. Those aren't things that are, affect the playability or the sound of your guitar. They also scrimp on the electronics. The electronics, they use cheaper components in the electronics. Uh, the problem with cheaper components is not so much uh, a difference in tone, though it is very subtle. Um, it's that they tend to break easier because of quality control and whatnot. But again, don't be afraid of your guitar. You know, uh, your, your selector switch stops working, pop the back off, chances are the wire has come off because of quality control. Buy a $20 soldering gun, soldering is not hard, solder the wire back on, fixed. Your jack stops working pop the jack out, chances are the wires come off, solder it back on, fixed. Same goes for your pickups. You got a pickup that stops working, chances are it's not in the pickup. Like I said, a pickup isn't rocket science, it's, it's copper wrapped around a magnet. Uh, chances are the wires come loose. Uh, easy fixes on budget guitars, things that tend to go wrong with budget guitars, they're easy fixes. Soldering is not hard. Uh, they also tend to scrimp on the nut, and this is 80% of the problem when it comes to tuning instability. This is where the strings are catching for the most part is on these plastic nuts they put in budget guitars. I don't know why they keep putting plastic nut in budget guitars. This company, Graftech, they make synthetic bone self-lubricating uh, guitar nuts and uh, for like 10 bucks. And I'm sure these large guitar companies like Fender and Gibson could buy these in bulk from them for like 50 cents a piece and uh, put those in their guitars instead and it would not raise the price of their guitars at all and it would greatly improve the tuning stabilities on these budget guitars. So we're going to put one of these graph deck nuts in this guitar. Uh, the tuning pegs, they generally put cheaper tuning pegs with lower gear ratios in these budget guitars. Gear ratio, uh, these have 14 to 1 gear ratios. If you don't know what a gear ratio is, it's how many times you have to turn the, the key before the post goes around once. So I have to turn this 14 times before the post goes around one time. I don't think it has a whole lot to do with tuning stability, but as far as fine tuning goes, 
a higher gear ratio is better for fine tuning uh, your tuning. So we're going to put some 19 to 1 uh, locking uh, tuners in this thing and uh, put some graphite dust in all the contact points at the saddle. Uh, we're going to put some graphite dust in the saddle. We're going to put some graphite, graphite dust in the, uh, the new nut, even though it is a, a Graftech uh, self-lubricating nut. It can't make it worse. It's only going to help it. Uh, and, uh, you know, anywhere the, the string meets the body, we're going to put a little graphite dust, and that will help the tuning stability. So uh, follow along. If you've got a budget guitar, you, want, you like how it plays, you like how it sounds, but it uh, won't stay in tune for you. Uh, follow along. We'll show you how to uh, fix this. And uh, if you have an expensive guitar that's not staying in tune. Uh, but, you know, this tutorial is only for Gibson-style, Epiphone-style guitars. Uh, Stratocasters have nuts that slot into the fretboard. Those are a little trickier to get out. This one's pretty easy to get out as it just uh, sits up against the fretboard. You just have to kind of knock it out. And uh, the, the ones that are slotted in are a little trickier to get out. But uh, So this tutorial is only for replacing the nut on an Epiphone Gibson style guitar. Uh, the new tuning peg should slot right in. They have uh, pretty standard uh, sizes when it comes to uh, the Gibson and Fender anyway. They have standard sizes when it comes to uh, the holes in their headstock for uh, tuning keys. So uh, anyway, let's get to this for like, you know, 60 bucks, 70 bucks uh, and 20 minutes of your time. Uh, it'll uh, greatly improve your budget guitar or your expensive guitar. So uh, let's get to this. Okay, first a quick word about some of the tools that we're going to need to get this job done. Of course, you're going to need your new tuning keys. I am using Wilkinson Easy Lock Tuning Keys on this guitar. Wilkinson is a company out of England who make reasonably priced aftermarket guitar parts. These are uh, about 50 bucks for a set of these tuning keys. Um, more expensive tuning keys by, say, Grover or Schaller, they're really easy to restring. You, pop, you run the string through the hole, turn a little dial underneath the tuner, locks it in place. These are a bit more labor intensive. It's a two hole system in the post, as you can see. You run the string through the top hole, wrap it around once, and then run it through the bottom hole, and that locks it in place. Uh, a bit more labor intensive, but relatively speaking, it's still not a lot of work. You're going to need your new Graftech nut. <clears throat> You're going to need a little bit of wood glue. Uh, your graphite dust. You can pick this up at a hardware store for like three bucks. It'll last forever. You're going to need a utility knife, a hammer, uh, a uh, small Phillips head screwdriver, a block of wood, and uh, maybe a little wrench. So, uh, or a pair of pliers. So, uh, anyway, I think that's all we need. So, let's get started and uh, improve the tuning quality on this guitar. All right, the uh, first thing I have to say is I've never made a video of this sort before, so I apologize if I'm uh, unclear or for the, the quality. It's my first try at something like this. Uh, first thing we have to do to get the nut out is remove the uh, truss rod cover. Three little screws, pop those out. The, truss, uh, the nut is held in place by a little bit of glue, probably some lacquer on uh, either side of the nut, and the uh, truss rod cover. So we're going to get that truss rod cover off. That was easy enough. Uh, now we're going to take your utility knife and score along the edge of the nut on both sides. From the uh, fretboard side, being careful not to cut into the wood. Angle your uh, utility knife towards the nut so you're cutting kind of into the nut and not really into the wood of the fretboard. And do it again from the other side, being careful not to cut your thumbs off like I almost did right there. I suppose I could still play without a thumb, but it would not be very much fun. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the nut scored on each uh, side to remove any lacquer or poly finish that may be holding it in place. Then you're going to grab a block of wood. Uh, I had a block of wood for jobs such as this, but I couldn't find it. So I pilfered one from my wife's jewelry collection. This is a, a wooden jewelry box. At this point, I wasn't doing a very good job because all I was doing was moving the guitar. So I, uh, I shifted position, gave it a few taps, a few light taps, and the nut popped right off. Bob's your uncle. Uh, so that was easy enough. And uh, now you're going to take your new Graftech nut. This is a self-lubricating uh, synthetic bone Graftech nut. Going to measure it up against the, uh, the nut that you took off. Uh, ideally, you want them to be the exact same size if that is the reason you're changing the nut to replace uh, you know, a plastic nut with a better quality nut. 
and not to uh, to lower the action on your guitar. If you're doing it to lower the action on your guitar, uh, you may want to sand the nut down uh, at the base. Uh, GraphTech make these nuts a little bit bigger than they need to be because they're very easy to sand. So I'm going to use this. Uh, this nut is uh, the exact same height as the nut I took off, so I was lucky there. Maybe uh, like half a millimeter shorter, which is fine. That'll just lower the action maybe half a millimeter. But it, it was a little bit longer, so I need to uh, file these down just a little bit on each end. So I got some 250 grit sandpaper. Being careful to uh, file the ends down the exact amount because you don't want your, uh, your nut slots where the strings go in to be lopsided. So uh, 10 or 12 little rubs on each side. And then measure it up again against the uh, nut that you took off. See if you've taken enough off. At this point, I hadn't. There's still a little bit, of, <clears throat> still a little bit of overhang. So another eight or nine rubs on each side of the uh, nut on the sandpaper. Measure it into the guitar. See how it looks. Still slight amount of overhang. So a few more uh, rubs on the sandpaper. Give this another shot. I'm uh, kind of narrating my own video here because uh, when I was doing this work, I wasn't really talking and explaining it well enough. I wasn't really talking enough, I suppose. I, I was kind of busy uh, getting into what I was doing and uh, I, I wasn't really doing a whole lot of explaining. So, uh, so I figured I'd just uh, delete the audio from my video and uh, narrate over top of my own video. So at this point, the nut fits perfectly. There's no overhang on either side of the fretboard. And that is done. So uh, we're going to remove our cloth. And now it's time to uh, remove the tuning keys from this guy. I'd never removed the tuning keys from a Gibson guitar. I don't own any Gibson guitars. I'd only ever done it from a Stratocaster style guitar. Uh, these type of tuners have two screws in the back. Stratocaster style tuners only have one. And they have a nut on the top of the headstock to secure the tuner in place. Uh, these type of tuners, and I think these are uh, pretty standard type of tuners that come in Gibson guitars, uh, do not have a nut on the top to tighten the tuner in place, but they do have two screws in the back. So we're going to remove those two screws, pop the uh, tuner out. I'm going to uh, remove one more tuner before I fade this video out because you do not want to sit through two minutes of me just removing tuners. You pretty much get the point at this uh, at this juncture. So we're going to remove two of these tuners, remove the screws. This uh, guitar was made in Indonesia. I, uh, a little sticker on the back there. I was surprised. I figured they'd be made in China maybe, but uh, this one's made in Indonesia. So we've got two of the tuners off. Now we've got all six tuners off. And uh, when I turn the guitar over, I realized that there were little washer inserts down in each of the holes that needed to come out and they were pretty firmly in place. Uh, I got one out and uh, so now I had five more to get out and uh, they, they didn't just pull out so the, it was a little tricky. They were, they were quite firmly in place so I took my little screwdriver gave a couple of uh, pushes down through the uh, the hole in the headstock, trying to push these guys out. Didn't have much luck with that one, uh, so I moved on to another, and that one popped out quite easily. You can't see it, but it fell out behind my hand, and this one popped out quite easily, and so did that one. And uh, a couple of them gave me a little bit of work, but I got them raised, and uh, I got them raised up off of the headstock a little bit and then I found this little guy in my toolbox. I have no idea what it's called uh, but I, I uh, fit that underneath the uh, the washer and it popped right up. I just needed a little bit of room being careful not to damage the uh, finish on your headstock while you're doing this. This one was a bugger. I had a little more work trying to get this guy out so I went back at it with my screwdriver, pushed it down a little bit more 
See if I could get it raised up a little bit so I could get my, uh, my fancy little screwdriver under it. What is that called? I have no idea what's that, what that's called. And this time I got it raised a little bit, got my uh, screwdriver under it, and it popped right out. So that was a little bit of work, but uh, no big deal. Uh, at this point, uh, like I said earlier, I, I thought Gibson and Fender uh, tuners were pretty standard, and they had standard size holes. Uh, unfortunately, I was wrong. The tuners, uh, the Wilkinson tuners I, I was using for this guitar were much bigger, much bigger. I had to drill uh, much bigger holes in the headstock. I was a little worried about this. I had never done this before, and I was trying to remain cool, <laughs> thinking, uh, okay, I'm making an instruction, instructional video here, and I've never actually done this before. But uh, it was no problem. Uh, I grabbed a, uh, uh, a drill bit that was a little bit bigger than the hole I needed. Uh, it wasn't big enough, so I grabbed another drill bit, tried again, going up incrementally in size of drill bits here. Uh, at this point, I was pretty close. Uh, I could have jammed this tuner in, but I didn't want to get into forcing the tuners into the holes. And I knew I had another drill bit that was uh, one size bigger than this. I tried to make this hole a little bit bigger by just re-drilling through it a few more times, but that still didn't quite work. I still would have had to force the tuners in. So in a second, I'm going to run off and grab a, a drill bit that is uh, one size bigger than the one I used. And I knew at this point uh, it was probably going to be fine. So we pop this drill bit in. Down through the hole again. Careful not to drill through my table. I don't have a workshop. I'm doing this at my dining room table. And uh, at this point, I'm pretty certain that we're going to be fine. And we pop that in and it's perfect. Fits in just right. A little snug, but just right. So that was an unexpected setback, but uh, really not a big deal. I don't know what you would do if your tuners were too small for the holes that you're replacing it with, but uh, maybe you'd have to fill the holes in and, and drill new holes. But uh, I think this is the more common problem is that the holes are too small for the tuners you're putting in. So we've got this tuner in now and uh, we're ready to start uh, putting the rest in. So so I put one tuner in, locked it in place, screwed it in place, and because uh, like I said, I'd never done this before with a Gibson guitar, so uh, I wanted to make sure I was doing it correctly before I showed you guys what I was doing. So I've got one tuner in place, and there's my dog, coming to see what's going on. It's Vicky the Shih Tzu. So we're going to take another tuner, uh, make sure your uh, tuners are lined up correctly. These are three per side tuners. Uh, these are Wilkinson's with big W's on the back, so it's pretty easy to line the W's up uh, in line with the headstock uh, to know which three go on which side of the uh, headstock. So we're going to screw this guy in place using the same screw hole from uh, the tuners that came out of it, and that'll help ensure that the tuners are going on straight. And like I said, the uh, tuners uh, that I took off had two screws in the back and no nut on the top. These uh, Wilkinsons only have one screw on the back, but they do have a nut on the top to secure the tuner in place. So we're going to get to that in a second. And uh, we're going to take this nut. It's kind of a, a little uh, cylindrical type uh, nut that slides down through the hole and then screws in place. At this point, I had forgot to put the washers in. As you can see, there's washers there on the table, and I had forgot to put those in. I'm tightening this nut up without the washer. Not a huge deal, but uh, I realized my mistake in about another minute and have to undo this guy and uh, pop the washer in underneath it. And uh, now we're going to pop in all of the tuners, making sure each one is put on the correct side. And again, I won't waste your time by showing you how to put in six tuners. You've already seen me put in one or two, and that's enough. So screw that into the same uh, hole. 
Now, there may be uh, a little holes showing on the back. That's unfortunate from the, uh, the old tuners because they had two uh, screws and not one. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it will hide underneath the tuner, but again, not a big deal if there's a, you know, you're replacing tuners. There we go. We've got all six uh, tuners in. And uh, we're putting those little cylindrical... Uh... Oh, no, we're putting the washers on. At this point, I realized I'd forgot the washers. And uh, we're going to have to remove those two screws, that uh, those two little cylindrical uh, nuts that I put in. So we're going to remove those. It's going to take 30 seconds here. And get the washers under them. And that's one. Now we'll get this guy off and get the washer underneath. I'm sure this video could have been seven or eight minutes shorter. There's things here that uh, I don't need to show you over and over again. But like I said, this is my first try at something like this. So I wanted to be clear. So we're going to get these washers on. And now we're going to put those little cylindrical nuts over all the posts and tightly secure those. At this point, I had lost one of the uh, nuts, one of the little cylinders. And uh, I started panicking. I couldn't find it. And uh, I was hoping that uh, it wasn't actually not included with the nuts. That would have been a bit of a disaster. But uh, I eventually shut the video down at this point and went to look for it. And I eventually found it on the floor. So I, I found my little cylindrical nut, got it in place. And now we're going to tighten those up. Nice and secure. I got shaky hands. I don't know why my hands are so shaky. I don't drink anymore. I haven't had a drink in three years, but uh, I used to shake like this all the time. But uh, be a little nervous, I guess, doing a video that I've I've never really tried to do before. So we'll get these uh, these nuts in place, tightened up. Do that to all six. And that's done. So we've got the tuners in secured a few setbacks along the way the whole thing took me about 15 20 minutes that's even with the setbacks of uh, needing to drill new holes and losing nuts and uh, losing washers and forgetting washers still only took me about 15 minutes now we're going to take a little bit of carpenter's glue and we're going to put it in the nut slot i'm running off there to grab a toothpick because you don't need much glue because the uh, little bit of glue to secure it in place if you ever need to get this nut out again you're not going to want it uh, too securely, securely glued in place. So a little toothpick's worth of glue should be enough. A little bit in the nut slot, a little bit up against the fretboard. Being careful not to get any on your fretboard or on the finish of your guitar. If you do, just uh, wipe it off while it's still wet. Put your nut in place. Make sure you've got no overhang on either side. Any glue, if you put too much glue, if it squirts up, just wipe it away. And now we're gonna put our truss rod cover back on and that will help uh, secure the nut in place while it's drying. Replace those three little screws. On Stratocaster style guitars, they do not have truss rod covers. For the most part, I think, I've never seen one but very common on Gibson style guitars. I think all Gibson style guitars have uh, truss rod covers on them. So this will help hold that in place while it dries. I'm gonna leave this overnight, let the uh, nut dry in place before I put some strings on it. And we're just finishing up here, getting these last three screws in place on the truss rod cover. And this job is almost complete. Uh, from start to finish, it was, uh, it was less than a half an hour. And we're done. 
So like I said, we're going to let this sit overnight, let the uh, nut dry in place before we put some strings on it. And uh, I'm going to uh, be back in a moment and uh, show you how to string up one of these Easy Lock tuners. It's pretty easy. They're called Easy Lock. It's more work than the more expensive uh, screw type uh, uh, locking tuners, but it's still pretty easy. So, and that's it. Okay, uh, it's the next day. I've restrung the guitar. The nut is firmly in place and uh, I've restrung five strings and I, I left one string to uh, show you guys how to use these Wilkinson locking tuners. Like I said, these tuners have two holes in the post. One to, to feed the string through, and then you wrap it around and then feed the string through the other hole. Uh, it's a little more work than more expensive locking tuners, but relatively speaking, it's still not a lot of work. So you're going to take, you're going to feed through the top hole, feed your string through the top hole. This is my second attempt because I, I did it backwards the first time. Feed it through the top hole. Make sure you leave, you know, a, a, a hand's width of slack on your guitar. And uh, so then you're going to come around from the left. And you are going to wrap the string around the post and come back underneath the string. And then you're going to do that again. So basically wrap around the post twice. And then you're going to feed the string through the other hole. Like so. And that's basically it. And then you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to tighten up your, your tuning key. Like I said, these are 19 to 1 ratios, so you got to turn this bugger 19 times before the post goes around once. But uh, So that'll lock these guys in place. And like I said, the nut, when it comes to tuning stability, it's the nut that is 75% uh, of your problem. And uh, But good tuners, locking tuners, always help. So now we've got that in place. And uh, I'm not on the saddle, sorry, that's why you're hearing such uh, bad noise out of that. I'm loosen that up. Get this string back up on the saddle. There we go. And we're done. And I'm going to get my pliers, chop that off, and we're done. So that's how you replace the, uh, the nut tuners on a Gibson-style guitar. Take care of yourself. Ciao.